So, moving on. For those not familiar with Maltos, I shall spend a few moments giving you some background information. Maltos was first developed nearly 20 years ago, specifically as a secure, multi-application operating system and secure chips used in payment cards. Unlike other technologies used in payments, it was designed from the bottom up with security in mind and the scheme covers every step of the process from silicon manufacture to end of life. To date, it is used in many sectors, not just payment. We believe that it has an important role to play in securing the connected world. As well as traditional smart card chips, we are starting to see the emergence of Maltos products running on other secure microcontrollers, offering the security of smart cards with the flexibility of wider interfacing and control options. For the rest of the WebEx, when I refer to a Maltos chip or device, remember it's always a secure chip with protection against physical attack. The Multos operating system, of course, adds additional layers of software countermeasures to ensure even greater protection. So let's turn to the topic of smart metering. It's important to understand some of the goals of smart metering when considering how to go about implementing it. Here are six reasons, often cited. I'm sure you can think of more. So we'll look at the top three first. These are often aimed at consumers. I can see for people who don't go to the trouble of monitoring their usage through more manual methods, having easily accessible near real-time data on their energy usage may really help them to reduce their usage. Also, estimated bills where used are totally unfair in the mind of consumers and many would like to see an end to them. For prepaid customers, having such accurate data could really help them manage their energy use and purchasing. However, much more imaginatively, one way that a truly smart energy supply could help consumers cut bills is to have a dynamic energy purchasing model. In this model, the consumer could purchase units from whoever is cheapest on the day. Admittedly, this is probably not going to happen soon but it could come along one day. So deploying meters that can have their smart parts totally reprogrammed securely in the field in the future could be a wise investment. In fact, the need to update may be for much smaller but equally as important changes. Deploying a fixed function meter because it's cheap to do so now could turn out in the long run to be an expensive mistake. So already, from the consumer side, we can see there is a need for security. We need to protect the privacy of their data. We need to ensure it's accurate. And we need to provide up-to-date data and services and firmware. The bottom three reasons, on the other hand, are more targeted at benefiting the supplier. Current methods of billing and prepayment are arguably costly in terms of manual processes and the reliance on the consumer. Unfortunately, not all consumers are honest and a huge amount of currently undetectable fraud is possible. Smart metering infrastructures allow for much greater automation of data collection and detection of fraud and theft. Again, this relies on having good, reliable data that is trusted and accurate. Unless that data is protected, fraudsters will find a way, and often trivially, of comp compromising the system. And finally, of course, the other big issue facing many countries today is demand outstripping supply. Having a robust switched infrastructure is essential to managing supply. This, however, in turn leads to vulnerabilities in terms of attacks on the infrastructure and dishonest users trying to bypass supply restrictions. So again, security is very important. However, this comes at a cost. Cost is always cited as a barrier to smart meter infrastructures. 
Here are some of the factors that con can contribute to pushing up costs. Potentially, you are now working with two sets of hardware and firmware. The secure part and the general part. Different companies, states and countries will and do have different specifications, especially around security. Remotely managing meters requires more complexity in systems, but in theory, of course, it should be possible to extend existing systems. And meter manufacturers are not cryptographers traditionally, well, not yet. They need to buy in or outsource the new technical expertise. But hopefully with Multos they could do much of that themselves. So as we can see, the cost of the actual meter is not the only consideration. However, if designed well, the meter can actually help to reduce these other costs. Anything we can do to be flexible without compromising security is advantageous. Of course, the temptation is to come cut back on security features. There are at least three reasons to do this as shown. On the face of it, they could be viewed as good reasons. However, it really isn't a good idea in anything but the short term, as we shall see. Poorly secured meters and infrastructure will be rapidly compromised. There is enough to be made from fraud and theft for it to be a no-brainer for criminals to try and compromise meters and systems. Once compromised, these systems will need to be replaced at an even greater cost. And even more sinisterly are the threats from hostile governments and terrorists who may wish to exploit a weak infrastructure for their own aims. Now this may sound like a fanciful notion, but really it isn't. The news is increasingly full of stories of cyber attacks verging on cyber warfare. And of course, a business's reputation can be destroyed in an instant and it can cost a lot of time and money to rebuild that trust, assuming the business survives that long. So how do we start? Well, as with all IT projects, there are many choices to make, and somewhere a level of compromise is normally needed. Indeed, the number of options being presented as being solutions for the Internet of Things and smart uh, devices in general is forever increasing. It's crucial, therefore, to pick technology that is going to meet your needs. And naturally, we believe that Multos is one of those technology choices. Some of the pitfalls you may come across are these. They're being tied into a complete stack from device to back-end system from a single vendor. Not being able to modify systems in-house always needing to pay the supplier for changes and system components that are difficult to integrate either at the hardware, software or systems level. And of course technologies that are new and unproven are possibly more vulnerable than you are led to believe and systems can be difficult to update securely in the field and sometimes longer term costs are hidden um, behind attractive discounts that are given up front. So, we believe Multos can be a good choice and help to get around some of these uh, pitfalls that you may come across. Let's see how it can help. Multos is a proven technology of over nearly 20 years. It has never, to our knowledge, been compromised. The close of this year should see the billionth chip being shipped. Incorporating Multos secure elements and microcontrollers into your designs does not need to be expensive. From providing authentication and encryption functionality in a secure element to fully operating the meter or gateway with a Multos microcontroller, the development tools are all the same and free. 
With the latest Multos Secure Microcontrollers, the role of microcontroller and secure element is combined into one chip. Standard interfaces such as GPIO, I2C, SPI and UART allow you to interface to communications controllers and peripherals of your choice, allowing you to exactly tailor your system. Naturally, a Multos device allows you to protect customer data in the device and in transit, regardless of the security or quality of the communication links used. Some technologies you may come across rely on the security mechanisms of the data links themselves, totally neglecting the vulnerability of the data at either end and indeed the weaknesses of the transition, transmission links themselves. With Multos, every chip is unique when manufactured. Thanks to the way that they are enabled for use and applications are deployed to them, it is possible to clone a multi it is sorry, impossible to clone a Multos device or lo load fraudulent applications. More on that later. Multos chips are designed to be in use for many years. For example, Passports usually have a lifetime of at least 10 years. The ability to remotely update the device, even after many years, and potentially the loss of the original records for the device, mean that should the protocols and infrastructure change on your grid, it will be possible to securely update the meters. But having said all that, let's look at a bit more details. One of the hardest tasks when considering smart anything is the use and handling of digital encryption keys. There are essentially two choices. Symmetric key encryption, where each party shares a key, or asymmetric key encryption, where each party holds a pair of related keys, keeping one private and shares the other public part. The latter is often referred to as public key infrastructure, or PKI. Symmetric key encryption's main problem is securely distributing and storing the keys used, so only trusted people and things can use them. PKI's main challenge is verifying that a public part of a key belongs to the person or thing it claims to belong to. Keys are also used for many different things, including locking a device at manufacture so that only authorised people can use it. These are often called manufacturing keys. Secondly, for loading applications to a device, proving they are genuine devices, trusted, confidential, and that the applications you're loading are unmodified, etc. These keys are often called personalization keys. The third general class of keys are typically used for performing the crypto tasks as part of the user loaded application. For example, authentication, confidentiality, integrity checking, and non-repudiation. These keys are generally called application keys. So the Multos scheme was very carefully designed from the beginning to make every stage as easy as possible to achieve, but to leave total flexibility for application designers. At the heart of the scheme is the key management authority, as we've got in the middle of our diagram here. Think of it as a certification authority, but handling much more than simply signing certificate requests. In Multos, application loading is done using PKI methods, and the KMA is the source of the certified key pairs loaded into each Multos device when it is enabled. Enablement is the step of making a stock chip active, at loading its identity, its PKI keys, and setting its own chip. By having the certified key pair come from the KMA, encrypted under the unique manufacturing key of the target device, it is impossible to perform a man-in-the-middle attack on the key pair. There is a global KMA in the UK that is used for markets all over the world. It is in a high security environment 
hugely protected logically and physically, and is super scalable for high volumes. However, if you don't want to trust this, you can build your own KMA by licensing the technology. And this is done by several schemes and governments around the world. So what does this mean to you practically? Well, as a meter manufacturer, each chip, when you get it, is already unique from a cryptographic standpoint. There is no need for you to handle any keys at all in your facility or have secure manufacturing. As a meter asset provider, so one of the companies who are uh, renting out meters, you have no keys to manage. Once the meter has been locked to you through the enablement process, you control what can be added to and removed from the meter through your KMA controls. As an energy supplier, the only keys you need to handle are those related to your applications, whether that be keys used for billing, prepayment, top-up, etc. The meter asset provider gives you a certificate to update the meters for the clients you have. Key management, application development and personalization are all big topics. Thankfully, the Multos Consortium's membership includes many experts and vendors that can help you. So that was rather a lot on keys and key management. Let's look at a few important general points. The Multos application provisioning mechanism is designed to be performed in the field as well as in a factory. Practically then, this means that you can build a standard modularized meter and configure it just before or actually when it has been installed. This configuration could happen over the air, via a handheld device or even via a mobile phone. Switching supplier could involve a change of keys or even a change of application code. With Multos this is even easily achieved. Because each Multos device contains a unique certified public key, you can even verify and subsequently talk to a Multos device by just asking the chip for its certificate. Assuming you have permission to modify the contents with the appropriate certificates from the KMA, you, update, you encrypt the update to the target device so that only the target device can decrypt and use the update by using its private key. So this is at the point where we'll have a look at a demo. Hopefully it will work. So I hope what you can see here is we have on the right um, a view from a webcam which is pointing at a smart meter in um, which the top part has a demonstration Multos board. It's just something I built and it uses a Multos microcontroller that talks through the meter's data port and broadcasts out on a um, wireless communication device, in this case Bluetooth. That could of course be anything you want. On the left I have um, a user interface that allows me to act as the meter asset provider and to act as the um, energy supplier. So the first thing we can see is that the application that we are going to provision to the meter has a unique identification for that meter. Um, you can choose keys. These are just test keys. And the, the scheme is very similar to that used uh, or specified in the Indian specifications. There is a key that's unique to each consumer and there is a key that's related to the energy supplier. So to provision the application, the first step is to actually ask the Multos chip for its certificate. And as you can see down here, we can see the message going out and the certificate data coming back. That is then what we will use to encrypt the update with. 
So the next step is to actually personalize the data for that particular um, meter, and that includes injecting this data we have chosen up here. That's very quick and has been done here by our server using a connected HSM. Now we step through the commands for loading the application to Multos. These are all the same with Multos, and it does not matter what the application is, the process is always the same. So I shall do these and click through them one at a time. Finally, that application has been loaded, and you will see that the power has been connected and the light here is switched on. So now the meter is active uh, and in the control of the electricity supplier. Now this, I hope you can see here uh, the reading on the meter. It currently says 32.84. So I can remotely read the meter. If I do not have the correct key, and I try to read the meter, so this is somebody now trying to hack the meter or interfere, you'll see down here, the meter has done um, some authentication and has rejected the message. As the supplier, I can also remotely disconnect the power and reconnect the power. So that was my short little demo just to give you an idea um, of what's possible. So I've talked about provisioning of applications, but what about when they are actually running within Multos? The operating system is designed and thoroughly tested up to common criteria EAL7 in some cases to ensure that attempts to compromise applications and data resident in the device fail. Every application is filed from the other, sorry, is firewalled from the other and can only communicate through tightly controlled mechanisms. This means that it's perfectly okay to install a payment application such as RuPay, MasterCard, UnionPay, Visa, whatever, alongside your application for controlling and communicating with the meter. And extra applications can be added later in the field. So perhaps you would want to add some extra features. So this is a bit of a summary of what's been discussed so far. In short, using a Multos chip in your meter gives you a totally reliable route of trust. Critically, you know you are always talking to a genuine device if you use Multos as part of your design. I'd like to just have a quick word about the consortium. The world of digital security is complex. Happily, our consortium contains some of the biggest and most innovative companies in the world, offering a huge range of services, products, and advice around Multos. So these companies provide consultancy, they provide chip products, they provide tools for handling keys, they provide cards, they, just many, all aspects essentially are covered. I've nearly finished now, um, but for clarity, I would just like to reiterate the ways you can use a Multos device in your design. There are four basic ways at the moment. One is to use a secure access module, which is essentially a smart card chip, and connect it directly to your main microcontroller. Alternatively, you can connect that indirectly with um, some controlling logic. 
that's if you uh, wish to use a more standard interface to talk to the um, chip than the smart card interface. Thirdly, you could just use a Multos secure microcontroller. So this is the case I mentioned before, where the chip combines the secure element and the general microcontroller functions. Finally, you could use a Multos microcontroller as a crypto coprocessor for your main microcontroller. So the secure access modules can have a smart card form factor or they can be surface mount and they're relatively inexpensive to buy. You do have to interface with them with some software or hardware but you can use them for securely storing keys, applications and critical data. You can also use them for encrypting data that is held in an insecure environment. They're fully, progra fully programmable um, and they can use standard or bespoke authentication and encryption functions. They support all modern encryption standards. And finally, you can actually use them to help securely boot your main processor. If you're looking at the microcontrollers, um, you can use those standalone or as coprocessors, as I've already said. And these chips support many more options for interfacing to them. And they're a single chip system which already includes their clock, a large amount of RAM and flash storage. So this makes them ideal for not only handling the keys and certificates, but also for storing readings, which is a requirement in some meters. And all of course is tamper protected. The chips are low power and they incorporate all the security and functionality of a Multos secure element. And finally, if you want it, versions of these chips support NFC, which you might potentially use for something like mobile, mobile phone top-ups. Well, this is my last slide. Um, finally, the reminder really of why Multos represents a good investment. So products are built to last, they're built for hostile environments and there can't be many more hostile environments than smart meters. They're easily upgradable in the field and the methods, cryptographic methods they support uh, are good until at least 2030 and well beyond according to the NIST standards. So many thanks for listening. I hope you found that useful and interesting. Uh, and if anyone's got any questions, uh, please ask. And of course, we're very happy to take questions by email later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much for the presentation that you've made. And uh, there are some questions. Uh, OK. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Ankit Patel. And he has asked that, how to maintain sequence between smart meter to data center unit? How to maintain the sequence? Um, between smart meter to data center unit. Okay. Well, that's an application um, task, really. That is something that you need to program into your um, protocols. In my demonstration, if I just flick back onto this here, I had a sequence number. This was to um, prevent replay attacks. And my protocol that I invented for this demonstration um, is able to detect when it's out of sequence. Um, and it's possible to get the head end and the, the meter end through your application code programming to try and resequence by sending um, messages that try to reauthenticate. So, in short, it's something you have to build into your applications, but it is possible to do because your, meters, your messages can include a sequence number. I hope that answers the question. Okay. 
there is a question from uh, Mr. Selva Kumar S and I'll unmute him. Hi. Hello, Mr. Selva Kumar. Uh, would you like to ask any questions to this? Hello, sorry, I cannot hear you. Um, Hello, okay, okay. Move on. Hello, Mr. Yeah. So, we're going to take the next question. Yep. This is Mr. Subadip Ray Chaudhary, and he, he has raised his hand, and maybe he would like to take any question. Okay. Hello. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Good afternoon. Okay. So, going by your public key infrastructure, which you will be using in this, the application data of meter ID, unique consumer ID, and supplier control key. Just tell me something. Will auto discovery of meters, once the meter is fixed, be allowed under this mechanism of key exchange? Uh, Yes, because um, you can implement a scheme whereby um, the meter um, broadcasts its existence and by using the public key certificate of the meter, um, so it, it can broadcast that, you would personalize the application using the verified public key from the public key certificate and encrypt all the application keys and ID and anything else that you need uh, using the verified public key because of course you would use the CA keys to verify the certificate and then encrypt it so that only the target devices that have the corresponding private key target device because there's only one because they're all unique the target device can decrypt and use that data so you have a secure path there so even if you do not know the identity of the meter immediately you can prove its identity through its certificate and then guarantee that the data is only readable by each meter that it's intended for does that answer your question just one clarification and request, sir. This unique consumer key. Yes. That key uh, this, is something that, that yes. the. This is in my example scheme of how I envisage a, a, an infrastructure working. So that consumer key would be something generated by uh, either the electricity supplier or perhaps it would be generated by um, a wider. A wider body. There might be a national body that manages unique consumer keys, and that key itself could be symmetric, as I've got in my example, or that key could be an asymmetric key. Uh, it's up to the national scheme or the local scheme uh, how they want to handle that. And Multos allows you to program what your individual applications do. Okay, so got you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Subhadi. Thank you for the question. Uh, now uh, I'll unmute Mr. Gaurav Suman. He has a question. Hello, Mr. Gaurav, you're online. You may ask the question to Chris. Good afternoon. Yes, yeah, I. Hello. Hello. Can you listen yes, to me? Audible. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Gaurav. Uh, ah. so my, my question is, uh, you say now, uh, multi system is based on uh, high programming language like CC is made up of high programming language. Then how can we say uh, it is um, very secure? How can we say it's very secure? 
we can say it's very secure because um, each device has to follow a type approval process which I manage and there are four parts to that the first part is that the hardware the chip itself has to have been evaluated um, to common criteria standards which is an international standard for secure devices uh, you may be familiar with that we may not but um, it's it's used for all um, secure devices across the world including payments passports ID um, anything where security is paramount and that is something that the chip manufacturers themselves um, like um, ST and Infineon uh, Hitachi NXP, those sort of companies, that's the certification they apply for. Then the actual Multos operating system itself um, goes through a certification process. Um, it's called a security evaluation. And again, that can be common criteria or it can be another um, process depending on the market place. So, for example, in the payments market, they go through a security evaluation by MasterCard or Visa or one of the other big schemes and then I actually personally test these devices to make sure they comply with the specifications for interoperability uh, and as uh, and then finally the fourth part is that um, normally so in a payment environment, say, or there is a test by to prove that the devices are compatible and secure within those environments. I hope that uh, answers your question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Gaurav, for the question. And uh, Chris, there are some more questions. Uh, Mr. Sachin Bhardwaj has asked that can you demonstrate the read tamper event like theft, some tampering with the meters, those kinds okay. of things. I'll, I'll try. Uh, so at the moment, see that the, this lamp is on. Um, I just need to find a screwdriver. Um, just bear with me one second. Okay, Chris. Okay, so I have a screwdriver. I'm going to loosen the cover at the bottom here, the terminal cover, and this should trigger a tamper event. Now this is just something that I've written that runs inside the Multos application. Uh, there we go. And the act of tampering with that switch has um, cut off the supply. And that tamper uh, flag is stored securely in the Multos chip. It cannot be overridden unless you do it uh, remotely. So at the moment if I try to read the meter you can see the meter is reported back that it has been tampered with. It's only if I now reset that tamper switch by tightening that up and the supplier has to send a message to clear the flag that is uh, causing the power to be cut off. And oh, I don't think I've covered, I don't think I've tightened this up tight enough. Anyway, you could see it. You could see the tamper happen uh, there. Tamper. Yes, it hasn't yet. cleared it. Anyway, you can see how the tamper mechanism could work. That is just a function of your application that runs in the Multos code. 
Um, any more? Any? I think that uh, shows that working. Okay. So Chris has demonstrated how to tamper with the meter. Uh, I actually, actually, I think this question is very much relevant in the Indian context. Yes, I can reset this very quickly so I can get my meter control back again. <laughs> um, okay, uh, another question to us from Vishnu Shankar. How yep. simple can you make these meters to suit remote areas? How, what, sorry? How, How simple can you make these meters to suit the remote areas, like, you know, the villages kind of places which don't have too much access? Um, if you're talking about the design of the meter itself um, will depend very much and how it communicates will depend on the location um, if you talk to people about smart metering there are many options there are those um, there are options to build meters that can use the mobile networks or they might use short range radio to communicate with a central data collector uh, and that data collector then has a connection through to the supplier. Um, there are radio networks, I don't know if they're being deployed in uh, much in India yet but they're starting to appear here called Sigfox and LoRa which, have, which are very low power but very long range radio so they don't rely on having a network, a huge network of masts. So you could use that technology in your meters, for example. That would give you um, coverage without necessarily having to have internet connection directly. So there are many connectivity options out there. And Multos would integrate with all of those. Because if you think it's just a microcontroller, and you can add the module you need for the communications mechanism you're, you've chosen. I think, I think that's all I can say on that at the moment. Okay, hope that, uh, that answers the question. Uh, I think, of course, we have a crunch of time. So quickly, quickly, uh, if you can, you know, take up one or two questions more, um, maybe. How are you sure. going to disconnect connect a bunch of 100 meters? Do the DCU communicates to each individual meter? Um, that's up to you. Um, I would very much hope that the scheme would not allow for um, the, this is just personally speaking now, but if you had the ability with one message to switch off many, many meters, that would have to be carefully controlled. You would have to have some way of making sure that only the meters you wanted to switch off were switched off. Um, that would be down to the application and how uh, you, you designed your meter to work with your uh, data collection or head end. But from a cryptographic standpoint, I would, I'd want to make sure that whatever um, scheme you used made sure that only the meters you wanted to turn off were turned off. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so there is another question. Is it possible to maintain secure networks in tariff plans for smart meters? Tariff okay. plans? Yes. Uh, you could um, for example, in the um, Multos device, you could store um, the tariff. You could you can even store prepaid prepaid credit so that the actual credit is uh, stored securely in the meter. And when that runs down, the meter will switch off. Um, and you could remotely your application could be remotely updated with a new tariff plan uh, regularly that would apply then to any credits that were stored on the meter. Thanks, Chris. 
Uh, this is Aditya from Fluent Grid. What are different communication technologies supported? Um, I think I might have mentioned this earlier. The Multos device itself um, has some um, connectivity standards like I squared C, SPI bus, um, and UART, which is serial. If you're using one of those Multos microcontrollers, you can then connect modules to your Multos microcontroller that have the connectivity you want. So you might want a GSM module. That GSM module has an SPI interface, then you can marry it to the Multos device. If you're just using Multos as a crypto coprocessor, then it's whatever your main microcontroller in your meter um, supports, you can support. From the Multos point of view, it would allow you to connect uh, any module with a standard interface to provide the communications you want. Thank you, Chris. Uh, one last question, Chris. This is from India Smart Grid Forum. Okay. What is the time required between the meter and DCU to reach all data with a 15 minutes daily load interval? Sorry. <laughs> so what time would be needed to do the read? Exactly. Mm -hmm. What is the time required between the meter and DCU to reach all data? with a 15 minutes daily load interval. So I have to think about this. The actual, if you're just asking for the data to come back from the meter, the, the encrypted data, the amount, the size of that packet will depend on how you've, the scheme is implemented. So in my, my demo scheme, which is close to the Indian scheme, um, you're, you're only transmitting um, 16 or 32 bytes of data at a time, which is a tiny amount of data. Um, so collecting that should be very small, a very short time. S scaling that up, I mean, I'm talking milliseconds to exchange that message. Scaling that up to many millions of meters, of course, um, it's an interesting question. We'd have to do the maths, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do the maths, Chris. Uh, one last question, Chris. I dismissed this question. This is one last question because we are running out of time. And is there a web pointer for architecture of smart metering service one can skim through? A web, I don't know of one, um, but I, I know there are many companies out there that are trying to sell smart meters, and there are, there's a good consultant actually on our uh, consortium who we can put anyone uh, who would like to talk to a consultant in touch with. He's, he's a smart energy consultant um, who's got a very high profile in European smart energy market. So he, he's the expert and there's someone uh, we could put, anyone who would like to talk to, to him, we could pass on details. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much for the questions and for the presentations. Uh, we have the recorded version of the presentation as well. And uh, we shortly send the recorded version, link to the recorded version to I think all the attendees. Could I, could I thank the attendees for their time, for, for listening today. I very much appreciate it and uh, hope to hear from some of them later on. Thank you all the attendees, audience, Chris, Paul and the uh, India Smart Grid Forum team for making the webinar a success. Thank you. Okay. See you. See you, see you. Thank you so much for the webinar. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.